Hey, and welcome back. This is a really quick video that's going to show you how to turn any painting into an art rage looking painting. So this painting was one I did in Photoshop and, you know, I thought it was fun. It was a fun way to paint my wife is really like this cool point of view with the leg foreshortening and stuff. And I just had a lot of fun with the color palette, but I wanted to give it that art rage feel, which means I want it to look like th thick, chunky, real oil painting. And, you know, nothing does that like Art Rage. So here's my tip and trick for getting any painting to look like it has that Art Rage feel. The key is to create a new layer. Set that layer to multiply. And if you paint with any color other than white, it's going to look weird. So set your color all the way over to the far side and let it be white. And you can see what's already happening here. But let's turn this back to normal. And I'm just going to paint over my entire painting. Since I'm on a separate layer, it's not going to ruin anything. It's just all separate. What I'm doing is basically just using this separate layer as a way to create thick impasto paint texture. And I'm going to just use that as an overlay or rather a multiplied layer um, on top of my currently existing painting. And as you saw, I used the preset for the thick gloss square. So presets are a bunch of just kind of brush presets that ArtRage has. Use the thick gloss square and enjoy. The thick glass square is get really chunky, really bristly, really thick. And I, you know, I thinned it out on just the aspect. So it's more of like a, instead of that square head, uh, the brush head isn't just perfectly square. It's more of like a flat. But other than that, it's the pure default thick glass square. And all I'm doing here is just painting over my whole painting. And I'm, I am paying attention to the surfaces and contours of the shapes that I'm painting over, but I'm not really worried about it. I just want to get that texture. And as you can see, it doesn't take any brain power at all. This is just simple. Um, this is kind of monkey level stuff. Um, one thing I guess you could pay attention to is that um, in the canvas settings, depending on how the like virtual lighting is hitting your canvas, you can change the direction of that in the view canvas settings little panel but um, if, if you kind of want to get a different look or at the texture you'll notice that more horizontal strokes are going to have more of that texture and chunk and more vertical strokes will have a little bit less that's just because the lighting angle of the canvas and again you can change that at will but I like to kind of leave everything default just because it's not that big of a deal the key here is just getting the whole canvas covered with paint strokes and again using pure white is really helpful because it doesn't change the hue or the value of the colors beneath and assuming you did a good job with your painting you probably don't want to mess those up um i discovered this and and i just knew it was something i wanted to share i've talked about it before but i thought it was just uh important to do a quick little video of this so that it's just a nice and tidy single lesson way to to show people how to do this um, we all work all over the place, different apps, different uh, platforms and stuff. So it's nice to be able to give um, some of that oil painting texture to your piece, even if you weren't lucky enough to be able to paint it in Art Rage. So let's take this next step together and look at how this is all going to shake out. Um, now that the canvas is all covered, what I want to do is go back to my layer and I want to click on that little thing that looks like a notebook and then go to blend mode and then change it to multiply. And you can see here, um, as I turn it on and off, especially when I zoom in, you can see the great impact that this texture has. It can look like real bristly varnished oil paint. And, you know, now that I have the whole thing established, I can go back in and refine stuff. Sometimes you'll have too much texture in one area and not enough. Maybe the texture is the wrong angle or whatever, and it just looks awkward, especially on the face. You can use this texture really, really well to add the kind of individual strands or the illusion of hair strands. You can use it as a way to um, echo and copy kind of the, the brush strokes that you used in your oil painting in, or whatever you're trying to make it look like in, in Photoshop. Um, for this particular Photoshop painting, I was largely using Greg Rakowski's brushes, which are, have a nice oil feel, but I like to push that even further with Art Rage. So you can see this is one of my favorite tips and tricks. This is one of my secret sauce things that I wanted to share with you. And it's just so easy that there's no way you shouldn't be tinkering with this kind of stuff at sort of like a post-processing level. Um, Art Rage has 
a lot of ways to interface with other software programs. You can even import a Photoshop file directly into ArtRage and do what I'm doing here. But in this case, I just, you know, had, had a JPEG exported out of Photoshop and I just brought that in um, and that works too. But it's cool that you can import stuff directly from Photoshop with the layers, with, you know, all the, all the features of the, of the layers. And, and that is awesome. Um, ArtRage is just one of those apps that just seems so simple, but it has so much depth. And, um, you know, the, the reason, and I just love that it also plays nice with the other apps. So um, what you can see here is that if you kind of like this look, but you want it to be toned down a little bit, you can always change the opacity of the layer too. Um, so you don't have to just multiply it. You can multiply it and then change the opacity. And then another thing, you know, I just started tinkering with this and it seemed like a good idea. And so I'm going with it. Um, you can also use a little bit darker values. Like I'm staying kind of with grayish tones or whatever and, and utilize that multiply so you can push and pull your highlights and your shadows just a wee bit. As you can see here, the, um, the painting, you know, I felt like it read well, um, but I wanted to push the shadows a little bit in the eyes. I wanted to create a little variation and variety in the background. And you can do that with this multiply layer and you can, if the, the paint will blend in and it's all wet on wet paint on that multiplied paint layer. So whether you're using white or gray or whatever, you're able to kind of push and pull those values and it's going to blend naturally. So you're not going to run into any, any, any problems with this looking weird. It's going to just look super good. It's going to look super nice. And I think, um, I think it's going to be fun for people. So, um, yeah, you can see here, I'm just kind of adding some accents to the eyes, eyebrows, shadow from the hair, and all of that's done, you know, no risk, no, um, no danger sort of way, because all of this is already pre-painted, um, and it already finished and everything I'm doing here is like non-destructive editing and it's really fun. Um, you know, when you finish a painting, it's nice to be able to have some different ways to tinker with it. And this is just one of my favorite ways to go about that. Um, if you like this technique, you like this approach, you know, give this video a thumbs up, you know, let me know in the comments if you have another solution that works better. Again, let me know. But I just thought this was too fun not to share and uh, thank you guys so much for checking it out and best wishes. Happy painting.